picture a city carved into a tree-lined bluff rising up along the sweeping landscape of a peaceful river. At night, the town's lights sparkle along that dark bluff. From the interstate highways which intersect near its borders, the city appears like an electric oasis set amid the vast surrounding prairie land. The city is LaSalle, Illinois. The first recorded history of La Salle and its nearby area was written by French explorers Joliet and Marquette. Their discovery of the Native American village, Kaskaskia, across from what is now Starve Rock State Park, was home to an estimated 10,000 Indians, the largest encampment in the United States. Decades later, around the 1820s, the first white pioneers entered the present boundaries of La Salle County. Approximately five families soon built permanent cabin homes near the Illinois River where the city of LaSalle would evolve. The U.S. outpost, Fort Horn, was constructed about the same time close to the mouth of the Little Vermilion River. Slowly, more settlers arrived to the area from the east and the community began to grow. On January 15, 1831, Illinois Governor John Reynolds signed a legislative bill formally establishing LaSalle County. The township organization law, which divided all Illinois counties into election precincts, was passed 18 years later. Names for those new precincts were mostly taken from the oldest residing settlers. West of the Little Vermilion, Township 33, Range 1, was named Salisbury. That township was changed many times over the next few decades and often subdivided. The precinct named Salisbury eventually became LaSalle and Peru. The tiny village of LaSalle became of vital importance to Chicago and the rest of the Midwest, as the Illinois-Michigan Canal was proposed to improve commerce between the Great Lakes and the Mississippi via the Illinois River. Construction on the INM Canal began simultaneously on July 4, 1836 in Chicago and LaSalle. The canal was opened in 1848 and is credited with helping Chicago become a booming port in the heart of the growing nation. As the city's population grew, proud residents celebrated the Charter of LaSalle on August 4, 1852. A personal friend of Abraham Lincoln, Alexander Campbell, was elected as LaSalle's first mayor. In those first years of an incorporated LaSalle, Mayor Campbell, who later became a U.S. congressman, had magistrate powers similar to those of a justice of the peace. The first railroad tracks built east to west within the county were laid as the Rock Island Railroad was carved through LaSalle in 1853. A year later, the Illinois Central Line opened north to south routes with the completion of a huge bridge over the Illinois River. The competing railroads became vital links between LaSalle and the rest of north central Illinois, providing both freight and passenger access throughout the Illinois Valley. Soon, other regional rail lines were built throughout the area, bringing even more new settlers and businesses to the growing river town. As expected, efficient train service immediately took business away from the adjacent i &M Canal. The waterway was abandoned in the early 1900s. In that pre-1850 era, coal was critical to the great industrial progress of the United States. The first coal dug in Illinois was outside LaSalle, around the Split Rock area adjacent to the i &M Canal. The first commercial coal mine shaft to be sunk in north central Illinois became known as LaSalle Shaft, owned by the LaSalle County Carbon Coal Company. It was located near the vicinity of Canal and Union Streets. Historians of that time said the location of the coal mine was excellent. Chutes could send the coal directly to either the canal boats for shipping on the nearby Illinois-Michigan Canal or dumped into rail cars of the Rock Island and Illinois Central Railroads. Both rail lines were very close to the shaft. From that small facility in 1856, the LaSalle County Carbon Coal Company grew to employ 1,700 men and boys digging in five area coal mines in 1911. It ranked as one of the largest companies in the state at that time. The great abundance of coal and the convenient means of various transportation led to the establishment of many industries. 
Coal mining also brought new workers and their families, making possible numerous retail businesses to help build up LaSalle's downtown area. Among these new LaSalle residents were two young immigrants who came to LaSalle with a bold business plan in the late 1850s. Frederick Matheson and Edward Hegler, both brilliant mining engineers from Germany, chose LaSalle as the construction site for a zinc ore smelting plant. These newcomers realized that the Illinois Valley held the closest coal fields to the Wisconsin ore mines. The INM Canal, the river, and the new Illinois Central and Rock Island railroads provided excellent transportation facilities, and the close proximity of Chicago guaranteed the new zinc works access to a worldwide market. The Matheson and Hegler Zinc Company quickly became a success, so much that LaSalle became known as Zinc City throughout the world. In 1881, m Zinc built the world's first sulfuric acid plant. Both the zinc works and sulfuric acid manufacturing operations ran continuously in LaSalle up to the 1960s. As LaSalle grew, its new citizens soon realized that an educational system should be started with the community. Prior to 1847, several private schools were being conducted in homes throughout the village. In 1854, Sister Vincentia and the Daughters of Charity began the St. Vincent School for Girls on 2nd Street. It was 1857 when the community established the LaSalle Public Elementary School District, whose territory included the entire township of LaSalle. At first, a number of different buildings and houses were rented for classes until LaSalle Elementary built its first school building on 3rd Street between Buckland and Wright. The year was 1859. In 1862, the Irish community and its St. Patrick's Parish opened up Brothers School. It was 1871. The LaSalle City High School was first established on 3rd Street between Hennepin and Tontai Streets. St. Hyacinth's Parish opened a school in a section of its church in 1875. In 1879, the Grant School was built to handle growing class sizes in LaSalle Elementary District. It was placed on 10th Street near Crozet. The St. Joseph School was founded in 1881 in a building south of the church on Hennepin Street. That school remained until 1924 when a new Catholic school was built on the southwest corner of 5th and Hennepin Streets. It was April 11, 1896, when LaSalle and its neighbor city, Peru, combined their high schools into the new LaSalle Peru Township High School. The school's first building, which came to be known as Old Main, was a three-story brick structure located on the northeast corner of 5th and Charter Streets. It opened for classes in 1898. Despite the overwhelming success of their zinc works, the civic-minded German industrialists Matheson and Hegler did not confine themselves to the day-to-day -day operations of that plant. Matheson was elected mayor of LaSalle in 1887 he served for 10 consecutive years as head of the village. During his tenure, he oversaw the construction of the first waterworks and sewer systems, fighting special interest for municipal ownership of the important utilities. Matheson's philanthropic contributions to his adopted city and the surrounding area were numerous and far-reaching. He actually shared a vast amount of his wealth by donating hundreds of thousands of dollars to the development and formation of LaSalle Peru High School. Sensing an urgent need for improved medical facilities for the community, he also endowed $150,000 to start the Hygienic Institute for the well-being of his employees and their neighbors. Incorporated in 1917, the Hygienic Institute continues the dream of Matheson by providing quality health care for many persons in the Illinois Valley in modern-day LaSalle. The other LaSalle manufacturing partner, Edward Hegler, was not content with gaining worldwide notoriety for his bold innovations in zinc production. Intrigued with philosophy and education, Hegler founded the Open Court Publishing Company in 1887. He felt that the Book Publishing Center could advance the free and full discussion of the religious, philosophical, and academic problems of the day. He founded Open Court, which continues to be a major influence in the publishing world today in the fields of philosophy, world religions, science, and some of the important issues of the day. In 1887, Edward Hegler also was to write a major chapter in history of LaSalle. 
That year, he was instrumental in bringing Dr. Paul Karras from Germany to become editor of Open Court Publishing. Shortly after moving here, Dr. Karras fell in love and married Hegler's daughter, Mary. A doctor of philosophy, the 36-year-old Karras propelled the young publishing company into one of the most prestigious philosophy institutions in the world. That tradition of publishing unique and thought-provoking manuscripts by open court continues by descendants of Dr. Karras, now in the year 2000. The company produces the popular monthly cricket magazine, as well as six other critically acclaimed children's magazines, along with children's books and educational publications. Dr. Paul and Mary Hegler Karras's son, Edward Hegler Karras, was born in LaSalle in 1890. The bright young man graduated from the University of Wisconsin in 1912 as a chemical engineer. He brought his expertise in that field back to his native LaSalle town when he founded the Karras Chemical Company in 1915. During its more than 85-year history, Karras Chemical has employed thousands of LaSalle residents and is the world's largest manufacturer of potassium permanganate. Today, Karras remains an industry leader in providing a wide range of chemical products and services for water and wastewater treatment, air purification, and other environmental applications. A new chapter of the Hegler Matheson Karras saga continues today as family members are currently overseeing a multi million dollar restoration of the Hegler Karras mansion on 7th Street in LaSalle. While Hegler spent time between the zinc plant and forming his new publishing company, his partner, Matheson, became fascinated by clocks, watches, and other timepieces. In the mid-1880s, he met Charles Stahlberg, a brilliant German mechanic who had moved to LaSalle from Waterbury, Connecticut. Stahlberg had a revolutionary idea for assembling accurate, low-priced clock workings. The enterprising immigrant soon found solid financial backing for his process from the wealthy Matheson, and together they founded a clock manufacturing plant, the Western Clock Company. Without any expert clockmakers, which was unheard of at the time, 25 unskilled workers soon learned to quickly produce up to 50 wind-up alarm clocks per day. Convinced that a huge market was waiting for the unique timepieces, Matheson handpicked a talented management team to market the clocks. Soon, other stores began to sell the timepieces, and following several lean years, the commercial momentum that was pushed along by a wise marketing strategy ultimately made the company the world's largest manufacturer of alarm clocks. Patented in 1902, the company's first alarm clock, Big Ben, changed the time industry forever. It retailed for $2.50. That company evolved into the world-famous and mighty West Clocks Corporation. The clock company not only eventually employed tens of thousands over the years, but it also was instrumental in attracting other companies to the Illinois Valley area. Some of these new businesses supplied parts and materials to West Clocks, while others provided special services to the growing clock concern. Matheson was also instrumental in providing LaSalle with its first permanent public library facility. He helped purchase the property at 3rd and Marquette Streets, where the present library, funded with a $25,000 Carnegie gift, was erected in 1907. By 1880, the need for a local bank to serve the many needs of a growing community was obvious. The first bank, LaSalle National, was opened in the year 1880 on 1st Street, very near its present location. It was 1885 when Eureka Savings Association was chartered to help local residents obtain financing for new homes. The next financial institution, LaSalle State Bank, opened in 1894 on the site of First and Marquette Streets. With more than 300 years of operations between them all, all three banks are still strong in serving the community today. One of the area's first commercial radio stations, WLPO aired its first broadcast from LaSalle in November 1947. The station was first located in the majestic Hotel Kaskaskia. Eventually, the broadcast center was moved to its present site across from Illinois Valley Community College. The first newspaper to be published in LaSalle appeared in 1851, a year before the city was chartered. Called the Standard, the weekly lasted only a year. 
Over the course of the next 100 years, more than 30 newspapers opened and closed in the LaSalle, Peru communities. Some of the names of these small publications were Beacon Light, The Rattlesnake, The Watchman, LaSalle County Press, and The Post Tribune. After several evolutions involving many different owners, the only one left publishing today is the Daily News Tribune. Following a disastrous fire in December of 1948, the LaSalle-based newspaper opened their modern printing plant on 2nd Street and has been the recipient of many industry awards over the years. Despite the national trend for family-owned newspapers to be sold to large chains, the local paper has been owned and operated by Peter Miller II and his family for more than 50 years. Today, the News Tribune circulation provides news and information to dozens of communities in both LaSalle and Bureau counties. An important chapter in the medical history of LaSalle occurred in 1887 when three Franciscan sisters of Sacred Heart moved to the area to establish the city's first hospital. The sisters also organized a training school for nurses, which began in 1919. St. Mary's Hospital grew with the town of LaSalle as several different buildings were closed and rebuilt over the years. Decades later, in 1977, LaSalle citizens understood the financial wisdom of merging their health center with People's Hospital in Peru. And so, LaSalle St. Mary's was closed and the Illinois Valley Community Hospital was established. Now at the end of the 20th century, IVCH has evolved into one of the finest healthcare facilities of North Central Illinois. Cement also became important to LaSalle during the last part of the 18th century when the new industry grew dramatically. The first cement company located within the LaSalle city limits was the German-American Portland Cement Works on the east side of town. In the early 1900s, the company employed a huge workforce of 350 with a $400,000 annual payroll. In the 1920s, it was purchased by the Alpha Cement Company, which continued to make improvements at the facility. Today, that same plant has evolved into Illinois Cement Company, which took over the works in 1974. It remains one of the most important industries and employers in this area. The turn of the century from the 1800s to the 1900s in LaSalle continued to bring many positive changes in the community. Transportation by horse and buggy slowly gave way to electric trolleys and the first versions of the automobile. Dirt roads throughout the city were replaced by modern brick streets. The LaSalle Fire Department was motorized in 1917 and its horses were sold off. For many years, the city had two fire stations, one at City Hall, the other on Crozet near 8th Street. A modern facility was dedicated on 5th Street in 1987 following a public referendum. At the height of its popularity in the 1920s, the Interurban, also known as the Illinois Traction System Service, moved passengers and freight in electric train cars from Joliet through LaSalle to Princeton. The population of the city grew steadily during this time. In 1860, the number of residents, a little more than 4,000. Eighty years later, in 1940, the population more than tripled to 12,800. Following the turn of the century, LaSalle became a popular vaudeville stop as Zimmerman Opera House featured such acts as the Marx Brothers and other traveling theatrical plays and shows. Later in 1914, the LaSalle Theater showed silent movies with live music featuring both local and national talent. Because LaSalle was a center of a large industrial area, it attracted smart, determined newcomers who opened businesses and shops to serve the community. Such a man was an Irish coal miner by the name of Thomas Cawley. With partner Vince Kelly, they opened a small pool hall and cigar store that eventually became famous throughout the Midwest and beyond as a popular casino. To many, LaSalle became known as Little Reno as thousands traveled to the city each weekend by rail or automobile for music, drinking, and gambling. Businesses such as Taylor's Livery and LaSalle Garage Company were prosperous at the turn of the century before society slowly changed their personal mode of transportation from horse and buggy to automobiles. The area's first laundry was opened in LaSalle around 1887 by Oliver Holmes, 
and later bought out by W.E. Fitch in 1895. Serving some 30 communities surrounding LaSalle, Fitch's Laundry furnished clean shirts and collars and grew to employ nearly 30 people by 1911. The present city hall was built during the administration of Mayor Walter Panic. Costing an astonishing $75,000, the building was dedicated on January 1, 1907. Designed by architect Victor Mattison, the LaSalle City Hall is of the Renaissance style, composed of paving brick and Bedford stone. Renovated many times since it was first constructed so long ago, the building was named to the National Register of Historic Places in the late 1980s. On the educational front in LaSalle, many gifts of money and property from the Matheson family continued to improve schools in the city. New buildings and athletic fields did much to attract quality educators to teach at LP High School and other LaSalle facilities. One of the Midwest's first junior colleges, the LaSalle Peru Oglesby Junior College was established in 1924. Classes were held nightly in the high school. The success of that institution continues today as Illinois Valley Community College. IBCC is now recognized as one of the finest junior colleges in the United States. A major event for LaSalle Public Schools occurred on September 6, 1938, when the LP High School football stadium was opened. A part of the Federal Works Progress Administration program, the massive sports complex was celebrated as one of the nation's finest high school football facilities. Refurbished in the late 1990s, the stunning stadium was rededicated with much public fanfare on August 25, 1996. Parochial schools also flourished in LaSalle for decades, beginning toward the end of the 1800s. In 1888, the Irish Congregation of St. Patrick's Parish built an elementary school near their church. The present school, located on 4th Street between Marquette and Gooding Streets, was dedicated in the late 1950s. St. Hyacinth's moved their regular classes to a new building on the corner of 11th and Hennepin Streets in 1901. Sixty years later, in 1964, the St. Roque Church opened its school near 6th and Crozet Street to accommodate children of their parish. In 1985, the parishes of St. Hyacinth, St. Roque, and Queen of the Holy Rosary consolidated their schools. Known as LaSalle Catholic, over 160 students are enrolled annually. Started in 1957 as a developmental center for cerebral palsy victims, the Lighted Way continues providing educational services today in LaSalle for mentally and or physically challenged youngsters. Other LaSalle schools include LP Christian School and Midwest Cathedral, both of which offer Christian education classes for the children of the area. In short, today LaSalle schools continue to offer excellent educational opportunities for children of all ages. A major milestone in LaSalle's history was the completion of Interstate 80 on its northern boundary in 1962. Another victory for the city of LaSalle was a period in the mid-80s when local residents successfully lobbied both state and national legislative bodies to complete I-39. The North-South Freeway, which runs on the largest bridge in Illinois at LaSalle, the Abraham Lincoln Memorial Bridge, has been an economical boost to every community that it passes through. J.C. Whitney & Company is one of the first new big buildings to be erected in the newly annexed east section of LaSalle. That was in 1995. The nationally known auto parts order business currently has more than 400 people working in the huge distribution center adjacent to Interstate 80. LaSalle continues to attract new businesses. Flying J, a travel plaza located off Route 351 and I-80 is now open. The 24-hour fueling station features a full-service restaurant, convenience store, and traveler rest area. Current Mayor Art Wyszkowiak is more than enthusiastic about LaSalle's future. Continuing the vision of previous administrations, we are working hard with our aldermen and business leaders to attract new industry and businesses to LaSalle. The expansion of our city limits and utilities to the east has given LaSalle a unique opportunity to offer valuable city services and prime real estate adjacent to two major interstates. 
We have an experienced workforce, abundant raw materials, and access to many modes of transportation. Now at the beginning of a new century, LaSalle stands ready to take a new high-profile leadership role here in the Illinois Valley. Today, as the city steps into a new millennium, residents of LaSalle continue to study the successes of their past as they work towards the future. They enjoy their lives here. They teach their children here. They play, work, and retire here. The quality of life in LaSalle is good, and there are people in the city who will work hard to ensure that that fact never changes. Now as the citizens of LaSalle prepare a year-long celebration of their city's sesquicentennial in 2002, plans are being made to unite the past and the present to achieve the extraordinary. A wise man once wrote, one of God's greatest gifts is to enable ordinary people to do the extraordinary. The extraordinary. Now that's something the people of LaSalle have always been good at.